Hi there, boys and girls. Welcome to today's vodcast on how living things obtain energy. Now, living things obtain energy by getting food. Remember, as we spoke about, organisms make energy by combining food with oxygen, and that creates a molecule of ATP that fuels our bodies. Now, there's two groups of organisms based on how they do obtain their food. We have a group called the producers. And we also have a group called the consumers. If you take a look at the names, the names are pretty simple to kind of figure out which ones do what in order to get their food. Producers. Producers make their own food. That's what produce means. So they make their own food without having to go get food and nutrients from other organisms. However, consumers can't do that. They actually have to go out and find food and eat it to get the nutrients that they need. Let's take a quick and in-depth look on the types of organisms and how they do obtain their food. Now the first group we're going to talk about are called the producers. And there's two kinds of producers. We have plants, who are the main producers on Earth, but we also have bacteria. There are some bacteria that can make their food, but as you'll find out later in this lecture, there are other bacteria that actually break down things. So right now we're going to mainly talk about how these producers make their food. Plants and bacteria do produce food, but they produce it using two different chemical reactions. So let's talk about plants. Now plants produce their food simply by absorbing elements and compounds in the environment such as carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight. And what they do is they take the sunlight that they absorb and react it with the carbon dioxide and water to produce a glucose, which is the sugar that all organisms need on Earth to make energy, and they release oxygen as a waste product. So if you take a look at the word photosynthesis and you break it up, you can kind of figure out what it does. So photo means light and then synthesis means to make. If you do a little bit of a word play on it and rearrange the words a little bit, you can come up with the idea that photosynthesis means to make from the light. So we're making food from light. Some bacteria live in very dark places, so they're not going to get the light that they need. So they depend on chemicals in the environment. So bacteria use those chemicals in the environment and use a process called chemosynthesis to produce food. So if we do a word play just like we did on photosynthesis, if we break it down, chemo means chemical and synthesis means to make, then bacteria makes their food from chemicals. So these are the two types of producers here on Earth. So now let's move on over to the consumers. We'll discuss the four different types of consumers that get their food from other organisms. Now the first consumer group that we'll discuss is probably the more popular one, if not the most popular. It's the carnivores. So an example of a carnivore would be a great white shark. So if you think about what a great white shark eats, they'll go out and hunt seals for their high fat content. If there's a floating dead whale carcass in the water, they'll feast on that to get the blubber so they can get more fat into their bodies because fat is high in energy. So as we're looking at what the great white shark eats, we notice that the great white shark feasts on other animals. And that's what carnivores do. Carnivores obtain nutrients by eating other animals. But don't get tricked into the idea that all carnivores are meat eaters. A lot of kids think that carnivores just eat meat, so they eat fleshy prey that have lots of muscles on them and fat and so forth. However, an anteater is a carnivore. They eat ants. Anything that eats insects, they are a part of the carnivore group as well. Because remember, insects are included in the animal kingdom. They're not in a separate kingdom, so they are considered animals. So carnivores obtain nutrients by eating other animals. Now the second consumer group that we'll talk about are called the herbivores. Herbivores are pretty easy to remember because if you look at the first four letters, they spell out herb. And herbs are vegetables or pieces or parts of vegetables that we use to spice up our foods. So herbivores include organisms such as the cow. And if we take a look at this picture here, we can see that the cow is munching on some grass. And we all know that grass is plant material. So herbivores obtain their nutrients by eating producers and or plants. So that's all you need to know about herbivores. So let's move on to our third consumer category. Our third consumer category are called the omnivores. So omnivores eat everything. But what does everything mean? So omnivores obtain their nutrients by eating both consumers and producers. So they eat both animals and plants. And one example of an omnivore is the bear. So here we have a picture of a bear munching on some leaves and maybe some berries that are attached to these leaves so they're eating the plant material that they need however as we saw on the cover of our notes bears can also eat animals so we have this bear eating a fish another example of an omnivore is yourself if you eat dinner with steak and potatoes you're eating both meat from a cow and then potatoes which is the root part of a plant and if you have a salad on top of that you're eating other plant material too so humans are another example of omnivores now let's move on to our fourth and final consumer group. 
Our last consumer group are called decomposers. And decomposers are pretty important. The reason why decomposers are important is because they obtain nutrients by breaking down dead organisms. So dead plant matter, dead animals on the side of the road, wastes laid by other animals, they all get broken down by decomposers. And if decomposers didn't exist, we would have dead matter littering the earth. So those dead animals on the side of the road or the dead plants that are in your lawn, they would never go away. We do have decomposers that take care of them. So they're like our natural recyclers. And this way, the soil gets nutrients that it needs because those nutrients were depleted by the living plants. So decomposers play a really important role in the ecosystem. And we have two kinds of decomposers. One kind of decomposer is fungus. So as you can see here, we have some shelf fungus growing on a dead log here, and the shelf fungus is going to digest the log by secreting acids on it and then absorbing those nutrients into the fungus. Fungus is an important decomposer, and as I said before, bacteria also are another kind of decomposer. So what bacteria do is they land or, or position themselves on some sort of dead organism, and they'll secrete toxins that'll help break down that organism. Animals have bacteria naturally inside their bodies, just like yourself. So if an animal like a deer is dead on the side of the road, after a couple days, what will happen is that deer will start to swell and it also will start to smell. And the reason why it starts to swell and smell is because the bacteria inside of it are breaking it down, creating these waste gases, which is that awful smelling gas. And the reason why it swells up is because the bacteria are producing gases inside the body. So it's basically inflating the body like a balloon. So decomposers, again, obtain nutrients by breaking down dead organisms, and they are the natural recyclers in our environment. The producers, consumers, animals, all these produce waste, it needs to be removed. It can be a turn, yeah. it can be a worm, yeah. it can recognize minerals and soil. It can be a mushroom, yeah. these chemicals, yeah. dedicated with your nutrients to earth. Take the poses, help the cow. Decomposes, yeah, the ecosystem's broke Yeah, it benefits all people, yeah. benefits all lives yeah. Yeah. Nobody will grow, without it, they just will die Do it for the animals, do it for the plants yeah. And it's gotta be this way, yeah, yeah. yeah.
And those are the different ways that organisms obtain food in order for them to produce energy that they need. Thank you for your time, boys and girls. Have a great day.